A Japanese startup is speeding up moon exploration by getting investors to buy into three lunar missions that are on schedule to start launching next year already. Next year's moon mission will deliver Dubai's first lunar lander and a Japanese moon robot to the surface of the moon. Here are the details. TechCrunch reports that a Japanese technology startup has raised millions to build a moon lander that will deliver the United Arab Emirates' first rover to the moon next year. To date, the relatively small Japanese company, called iSpace, has raised $195.5 million through crowdfunding, plus a $500,000 payment from Google's Lunar X Prize contest in 2018 for designing a prototype Hakuto lunar rover. The updated Hakuto R lunar flight model has reached its final stages of assembly and is on schedule for a launch in the fourth quarter of 2022. It will be carried to space on a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket launched from the Kennedy Space Center at Cape Canaveral in Florida. Apart from the UAE's moon rover, the lander will also deliver a Japanese lunar robot and three static onboard experiments from Canada. In 2023, a second Hakuto R lander will deliver an iSpace rover intended to collect data to support subsequent missions. 2024 will see iSpace send a larger lunar lander that is currently being developed in the US. iSpace's ambitions lie in commercial landers aimed at carrying rovers and science experiments to the lunar surface. It is also looking to monetize data it gathers from the moon, which it hopes to sell on to other companies, such as space agencies and research organizations, to aid preparations for their own missions to Earth's nearest neighbor. Scientists are proposing that sperm and egg samples from 6.7 million of Earth's species should be sent to a gene vault built on the moon as a modern global insurance policy. Such a lunar gene bank, which could also house seed and spore samples, is envisaged as being built under the moon's surface in a hollow, cooled lava tube. Specimens deposited in the vault would be kept refrigerated at cryogenic temperatures, with the facility's electrical power coming from solar panels on the moon's surface. The gene bank would preserve Earth's genetic diversity in the event of a global catastrophe, such as one that might be caused by climate change, a supervolcano, or an asteroid impact. The fear is that such a catastrophe could destroy existing gene banks on Earth. A new study into the possibility of creating such a vault on the moon is being led by mechanical engineer Jack Kanthanga of the University of Arizona. According to his initial calculations, transporting some 50 samples for each of the 6.7 million target species would require 250 rocket launches. In April, NASA awarded a $2.9 billion contract to Elon Musk to build the new moon mission's human landing system, rejecting a much more expensive bid from Jeff Bezos' company Blue Origin. However, Bezos is now making an extraordinary offer to try to win the contract after already losing it. Here are the details. BBC reports that Jeff Bezos is offering NASA a discount of more than $2 billion for the agency to give his space company a lucrative human lunar landing system contract that is rival Elon Musk's SpaceX won in April this year. In Bezos' original proposal for the lunar landing system, his Blue Origin company would team up with other companies to build three vehicles called Elements. These three elements would be launched separately and link up in Earth orbit. This is where the transfer element would be used to transport the whole package to the moon. Once in position over the moon, the two other elements would detach, using the descent element's thrusters to slow them down so they could fall to the moon's surface. The descent element would also protect the astronaut carrying ascent element from flying rocks, although this would mean that the astronauts would have to climb down a long ladder to get to the surface. Once it's time to return, the ascent element would fire its own rockets to blast back into moon orbit, where it would meet up again with the transfer element. The transfer element would then take the astronauts and their ascent element back to Earth. Once in Earth orbit, the astronauts would dish the transfer element and try not to burn up during the dangerous re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. After re-entry, the ascent element would deploy large parachutes to land on Earth's surface. In other words, the three elements of Bezos' system would work very much the same as NASA's first mission to the moon back in 1969. Astronomers from the University of Texas at Austin have revived a plan to build a massive 100-meter-wide mirror, made of liquid, on the surface of the moon. The scientists described the importance of such a huge product in a new paper published in the Astrophysical Journal. They say a giant moon-based telescope would be able to capture light from objects nearly as old as the Big Bang. Liquid mirrors are lighter, simpler, faster to construct, and 10 times cheaper than conventional glass telescope mirrors. The key to a liquid mirror telescope 
though, is that the liquid must be rotated constantly. When the liquid rotates, gravity pulls down on its surface, while inertia pulls it sideways at the edge of the dish. As a result, the liquid forms a uniform and perfect parabola, the ideal reflecting surface for a telescope. Work is underway to find the perfect mix of liquids as it requires a liquid metal to drift on top of other liquids, plus a thin layer of material on top to minimize evaporation. Liquid mirrors usually use mercury, but that won't work on the moon as mercury will freeze in the very cold moon temperatures. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.